Good morning to all. Greetings to you in the name of Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. There was a, a small boy and who lived in England. His father and mother, his parents was not very rich. The boy completed his studies, the primary education he completed, but he could not able to go for higher studies because of financial problem. So he started to work in a shoe company. He became a kublar. He started to make the shoe, repair the shoe, and in order to help the family. Because his family was very poor to maintain the family. But he, this little boy had the great gene. He had the strong gene to the ministry. He had the strong faith in the ministry. He had a strong faith in the God. And he had a strong desire to one day I will be the great messenger. One day I will be the great messenger in the whole world. He was prayed and prayed and prayed. Though he was making the suit, repairing the suit, and in between he was praying and praying, God give me the opportunity, God give me the platform that one day I will be the messenger, your messenger. I will carry your gospel, your good news, your word to door to door in the whole world. And one day the opportunity came and he became the messenger. He became the great missionary and he came to India. He came to India with his wife, children, and he started the ministry. Actually, the situation was not good in uh, India. Especially if we talk about the Sriampur, the Kolkata, the situation was not good. There was a Soti, there was child infanticide, child marriage. There are lots of superstitions. People are going through all the superstitions. They are not educated. So when he came, he saw if the situation was very poor. People are not educated. Lots of superstitions. But his wife does not stay in India. His wife told, please, I want to return to the London. In the 18th century, 17th century, London, the England was progress like anything in terms of education, in terms of the finance, in terms of industry. They are very much advanced. But his wife does not want to stay. Then the messenger, the missionary, he got a lot of suffering. Suffering from the family, suffering from the finance, suffering from the Many things. So, the time came, he, does, he did not have the money to maintain his family. The time came, he did not have the money for his wife's treatment. Unfortunately, he is, uh, one of the son died and his wife became uh, mentally paralyzed. And before his wife tried to escape, and tried to kill the great missionary with his uh, knife. So, the missionary, the messenger who dedicated his life to be the great missionary, to be the great messenger, he was struggling in the family, in the struggling of the job, struggling of the finance, struggling of the many society. And he started to take job in Darjeeling uh, in a tea garden. And later again, he came to Calcutta, Sarampur, to the ministry. My dear friends, the messengers of God often untreated. The messengers of God often uh, neglected and God suffering. The question is, who are the messengers? We have read Exodus chapter 32, uh, verses 1 to 8. We have read Romans chapter 10, verses 13 to 21. And it talks about 
the messengers of God often are hidden, neglected, and God all kind of suffering, the pain. The question is, who are the messengers? As we all know, messengers are the people, the God's people, who carry out the message. Whose message? The Christocentric message, theocentric message, the Jesus message, the God's message. That the Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. There are the messengers. If we see the Old Testament, there are lots of messengers from Abraham to Isaac, Jacob, Moses, Jeremiah, the prophets, minor prophets, the major prophets. They are all, all were the messengers. And if we see in the New Testament, Jesus, God came in the form of human being, in the form of Jesus Christ, the word became place. Jesus Christ became the first messenger in the New Testament. And he commanded his disciples that you go to the whole world and carry out my message, carry out the gospel, carry out the good news. Whoever believes that you make my disciples baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Peter was the messenger, Paul was the messenger. John was the messenger, Timothy was the messenger, and we all are the messengers. Because we all, our duty is, our main motto, our main motto is the same, to carry out the good news, the whole world, the nations, our, to our neighbors. So what is the message? What is the message? The Greek word, logos, when we read John chapter 1, verse 1, the word became place. In the beginning, there was a word, and the word was God. Word is the God. Means, if you see in the Greek word, logos, logos is the word, and this is the good news. Logos became the place. In theological language, we can say this is the Logosarch theology, Logosarch philosophy. Then God sent many messengers in the Old Testament. And later, God, Almighty God, Jehovah, Jiri, Jehovah, Nisi, the Alpha, the Omega, the past, the big, the end. The omnipotent God, the omniscient God, the God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of the Jacob, he came to the world in the form of the place. He came to the world in the form of the Jesus Christ. That in the theological language it says the Logos Sark theology, Logos Sark philosophy. Sark means place in the Greek word. Logos means words. Mean these words, the biblical words. The biblical word is the God, in the form of God. The word became place, means logos became place. Logos became in the form of Jesus Christ, our Savior, to be the first messenger that I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life, I am the good shepherd, I am the door. Before Abraham, I was. No one comes to the Father. Except through me. If you want to get peace, come and follow me. This is the good news. This is the message. Now the question is, why the messengers of God open unheeded? Matthew chapter 16, verse 21, it says like this. The son of man must suffer. The son of man must suffer many things. Jesus himself he said, as I was going, as I am going through all the suffering, they also persecuted you. If we see in the Old Testament, Abraham, Abraham was chosen by God to the messenger to do his ministry, God's ministry. But you see how many problems he was going through. He did not have the son. He was going through the pain. And later, Lord, his own family member, his brother's son, he told Abraham, uncle, I need this land. I need this land. Please take this land. Because I need this land is good. It's a fertile land. 
there is a benefit. So he was going through lots of problems. He was going through harm hidden from the family, family members. If you see the life of the Joseph, Joseph was neglected. Joseph was unheeded by his own brothers. His brothers sold him as a slave when he was only 17 years old. He was he was sold as a slave for 10 years. He worked as a slave, and for the three years he was in the prison. So total 10 plus 3, 13 years, he lost his life. He was unheeded. The person can die. But if God chosen Joseph, if God, he is the messenger, he is come from God, if God selected him, what is his brother? Told him at a slave, where is the God? Where is the God? Why God did not save Joseph? Why he was in the three years the people? There are lots of examples. You see the life of Moses. Moses was selected to be a great leader for Israelites. And when he took all the Israelites, and in between the journey, the Israelites complained, came to Moses and complained. Moses, why you took us? Our, before our life was very, at least we could get the food, shelter. But now, look. We are struggling and struggling and struggling. The question can rise if Moses was selected by God. He is a messenger. He is a God's people. He is a messenger. Why all people came and complained? Why all people came and complained to Moses? The messengers of God open unheeded. And if we see the life of Paul, the life of Peter, the full of suffering. The poor they were going through full of suffering. I want to give some examples of God of Jesus' 12 disciples. We know Jesus 12, Jesus had 12 disciples. You know, Peter. Peter left everything and followed Jesus. And whatever the Jesus Christ gave the command and he started the ministry. He followed. But he was going through so many problems and suffering and suffering, the pain, unheededness, all the things. But he all he accepted. He was crucified at 64 AD and he was tortured like anything. Then Saint Thoma, one of the disciples of Jesus Christ, AD 52 AD, he came to India and he was. He was beheaded. And next, uh, Saint John. Saint John, he was sent to the Padmos Island as a prisoner. Saint Andrews, he was crucified in Greece. Saint Matthew, he was uh, his head was chopped by the persecutors. Next, Saint Nathaniel Bartholomew. He was a mother in the Afric, uh, Armenia. Then Saint Philip. The soldiers, the Roman soldiers, pinched an iron rod into his body and hanged him. Then Apostle James. He was beheaded by the King Herod. The Apostle Jude. He was crucified by the Magi. The Apostle Matthias. He was apparently stone and then beheaded. Then Apostle uh, James, the less, he was thrown from the temple and then beaten to the death. Then Apostle Simon, Simon the jailer, he was crucified. Then Jesus' brother James, he was he was tortured like anything. The soldiers, they Held him from the 100 feet walls to the down, and he died. There are lots of people. There's lots of people. They're going through all the suffering, suffering, pain, and the suffering. Not only the uh, the 12 disciples of Christ. If we see the early church, the messengers of God, open unheeded, they neglected. 
they struggle in the uh, in the family in the final in the societies but they did not leave the job they did not leave the job if we see the history of kandamal in odisha the christian to a tortures the messengers of god were tortured they were beaten the church was born but that time the question rises many people will ask the questions to the pastors but where is the god look there are the messengers there are the pastors there are the missionaries who are tortured like anything they kill the other people kill the pastors where is the god and the kandama lights was there the question rises where is the god if god is far away from them if god selected them why god did not save them when gaham stain was doing ministry and he was banned by darasi darasi's leader the question arises that where is the god if god selected him if god chosen him and he was doing the ministry among the tribal people among the adivasi people and then he was uplifting their lives in the term of education in the term of society he he carries out a uh, good news if he sent by god why why god did not save darasi why god did not say why god did not say, sorry why god not god did not save ramstein why god did not say he shanti moti and the feeling the small little children also die if god eyes has a problem he does not hear if he closes his eyes a question rises and many good christians those are very spiritual christians they also criticize about god they are also gossiping about god why god is far away from the hamstein why god is far away from his son philip and timothy that time the situations make people to understand like this but you see now the situation 10 years later 20 years later you see the life the situation of the kandamwal when i was a lecturer of ocpc college the most the brilliant students came from the kandamwal and last uh, this year only uh, uh, some students from kandamal they completed bts from ocpc college and they joined bd in ubs and utc this is there is no education but now look all the villages in the kandamal side they came to christ in that present we cannot understand the situation we cannot understand god's plan god's purpose easily we can criticize god and criticize where is the god but you see the result now in the kandamal you see the result of the gaham stain where he was working when he was working the tribal base to see you survey they go and survey their how the people were developed the lots of doctors the professor engineers there was no before there was no education people was not civilized so we 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 can't understand the god's plan but god has a special plan maybe the, the servant of god maybe the some pastor maybe some a uh, messenger they are going through suffering god has a special plan maybe god also crying that they are going to suffering but he wants to fulfill his ministry he want to fulfill his ministry when paul was beheaded god really crying he was crying but he want to fulfill his ministry because his ministry is the ultimate that for one person he wants to save thousand and thousand thousands people that is the god's plan maybe i am suffering maybe he is suffering but god is making the example for the others to save others that others people the sinners will save by god's blessing why the jesus blood now the situation present situation in the monipur it is really 
is very sorry to hear all kind of the unwanted things is going on. The women are tortured, sexually abused in public. The church was, the church is being destroyed. Christian is being tortured. Yes, as a brother of Christ, as their brothers and sisters, and as a Christian, it really is practically to tolerate that our brothers and sisters are being tortured. It makes you bad. After 10 years, after when you watch in the history, you will see God has a special plan. You will see when the native people were they were torturing them. All the native people are they will come to when he was encountered in the way of the Namaskar, he started a ministry, first year, second year, and third year, he was not tired. Even the, the, the uh, Emperor Nero tortured him. He put him into the jail. He was not, he returned back. He did not, that he said that Jesus Christ is not God. The Roman Emperor told, oh, you tell me, Jesus is not the only truth and the lie. He returned back to the Jewish culture, Jewish religion. But he did not. Though the ladies people and the black people are now they're making the problem. But you see one day the result will come that something the special result will come that we don't know. Philippians 1 verse 29 it says for you have given the privilege of serving Christ not only by believing in him but also by suffering for him. Then we are Christians, we are coming to the church, we are doing ministry, we are helping, that is good. But Philippians chapter 1, verse 29, it says, that you are a Christian, you are a I am Christian, I am a believer. It is not enough. If you love Christ, if you, if your Christ is your Lord, if Christ is your Savior, he is the way, be ready to be suffered. When the suffering comes, when the troubles come, Praise to the Lord like the Paul. When Paul was in the jail, he never considered that he, I am the, in the jail in the Roman prison, Roman emperor. The Roman emperor put me in the jail. He always singing and praising that I am in the jail in the Jesus Christ. The my Jesus Christ put me in the jail. I am in the prison who what is made by Jesus Christ. So he was not upset. He was not worried. First Peter chapter 2, verse 20 uh, uh, and 21, it says, But if you endure suffering, even when you have done right, God will bless you for it. If you are going to going through all kinds of suffering, but you think that I am a God called me, I am doing my ministry. Though I am the problem in the family, problem in the job, problem in the my church member not like me, my my society does not like me. My I am I, out of throne. They thrown me out. But if you carry all kind of suffering for His, for your God, for the Christ, it is a blessing. It is the blessing, my dear friends. My dear friends, suffering will come, and God intentionally put suffering in our life for his glory. Why suffering comes? I want to give the three points and I will close. The time is not there. Suffering makes us bride of Christ. We see the James chapter 1 verse 2 to 4, Romans chapter 5 verse 3 to 4, and Hebrews chapter 12 verse 10. Suffering makes us bride of Christ. Then, suffering makes us humble, and ordinary before he is thrown. And suffering makes us to be a witness that we can be a good counselor, we can comfort others. Suffering makes us to depend, fully depend on him. Suffering makes us to enter into the heaven. Because the last will be the first. The first will be the last. Psalm 107 verse 1 and Psalm 150, it says, if you are 
neglected by the society, by church, by your brothers, by your neighbors. If you are going through suffering, whatever the problems is there. But if the every circumstance says to praise to the Lord, to praise to the Lord. Revelation chapter 11, 21, verse 4, it says, if you are going through all the sufferings and if you are complaining, God, give me strength. You chosen me, you selected me for your ministry, but supply your strength. I am ready to get all kinds of suffering. I am ready to accept all kinds of things. In Revelation chapter 21, verse 4, it says, the God will come. The Jesus will come the second time and he will wipe Every tear, every means code and uncode, code and uncode. The past will be last, the last will be past. He'll come and he'll wipe out all the tears. I told that at the beginning, my sermon, the story. The, the young boy who was a cobbler and who came to India, who he was, he was William Cobb, who said, Expect great things from God and attempt great things for the God. When he was selected by God, God sent him here. He was going through so many problems, pain, suffering, unawareness, the neglect, negligence, neglected by the society, neglected by his family. His life was full in the pain and suffering. But at last he told, expect great things from God, attempt great things for God. What the problem, whatever the problem comes, whatever the torture will come, it doesn't matter. But always we have to expect great things from him. And we have to continue to do our work, like attempt great things for God. May God bless you with a short sharing. Amen.